Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dan Bevels with Floyd Medical Center and this is the third in our series that we kind of uh, with a wink call our heart-to-heart -heart conversations because we're focusing on uh, issues of the heart, particularly among women. And in the first episode, we talked a lot about risk factors and signs and symptoms. In uh, the second, we talked about our protocol at Floyd if you come into our emergency care center uh, exhibiting symptoms of chest pain or heart symptoms, things like that. And uh, today we're going to talk about the emotional side of heart issues, and I'm very happy to be joined by Dr. Lindsay Claroni, who is one of our primary care physicians at Floyd, and also Rachel Camp, who is the program manager at a behavioral health program at Floyd. Thank you both for joining us. You're very welcome, happy to be here. We're really glad to have you, and Dr. Claroni, one of the things that we want to reinforce in each of these are those signs and symptoms and risk factors. So before we get into the emotional side, of uh, heart issues, let's talk about those. What are some of those uh, risk factors, symptoms, things like that, particularly among women that we see? Okay, so your risk factors you're looking at, um, obesity is a risk factor, as is hypertension, which is high blood pressure, as is high cholesterol. Those are some major risk factors. In women, a risk factor is age. In men, the age cutoff is actually 55. In women, your, um, your risk factor age is closer to 65. So age um, is also a risk factor, as is whether or not you smoke as is um, your diet and as is alcohol use. So um, with women, uh, beyond the risk factors, the symptoms are somewhat different also, right? So it may present differently in a woman. They do, they do. Actually, um, it's not the typical picture that you um, imagine when you think of a man having a heart attack or chest pain. Usually, um, the man is sweating profusely, he's clutching his chest, he's actually exhibiting signs of shortness of breath and I'm having chest pain. Um, oftentimes clutching his chest, bent over. In women, the signs can be a little more um, occult, as we call it, or hidden, not um, so clear. Lots of times in women, it can often present as heartburn. It can mm. often present as um, a feeling that your heart's fluttering and not your typical, you know, classic chest pain, crushing chest pain. Um, occasionally, shortness of breath can be the only warning sign for mm. women. Um, jaw pain can be a big mm. sign for women, um, as well as sometimes left arm pain, more in men, but also in um, women as well. So they need to be a little more on the lookout than men do because it doesn't always present as your typical, um, what we call acute coronary syndrome, where the guy is clenched over clutching his chest. You know, and I don't think we want to terrify folks, but at the same time, we do want to caution and say, if you're experiencing those things, it's good to be checked out. Absolutely, absolutely. If, you know, if it's not emerging and it's something that's been going on periodically, that would be something where you would want to check that out with your primary care physician. If it's an emergent situation where it's sudden onset, um, you can't seem to catch your breath, things like that, that would potentially warrant an emergency room visit. Let's talk a little bit, now that we, we've kind of talk about those symptoms and risk factors about one of the causes that a lot of folks may not think about and that's emotional well-being. So anxiety and stress really can play a part. Can't Absolutely. It? Although there are no direct studies linking stress with coronary artery disease, increased stress can lead to high blood pressure, can lead to um, modification of lifestyle which um, affects those other risk factors. So say for example um, when you have an acute stress reaction usually the flight or fight response is triggered and that increases the adrenaline in your body. Um, that as a result can increase your heart rate and blood pressure and over time repeated episodes of that or prolonged episodes of that can lead to hypertension or high blood pressure. Um, as well, stress leads a lot of people to adopt lifestyle factors that they wouldn't normally do if they were not stressed. So a lot of people um, manage their stress by overeating, which can lead to obesity, which is a risk factor for coronary artery disease, as well as a risk factor for um, hypertension and high cholesterol. Um, can lead to increased alcohol use, which um, increases your risk for hypertension as well, um, and your risk for coronary artery disease. Can um, also lead to a decrease in exercise, which studies have shown that exercise is beneficial to lower your blood pressure, lower your cholesterol, lower your risk of heart disease. It's interesting, and when you think about uh, those things that lead you to, such as alcohol, alcohol is actually a depressant, so it just kind of keeps you in that cycle. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so too you're, much use. you're getting the adrenaline and then you're using the alcohol to calm down the anxiety. A lot of people do, so it's, it's just a vicious cycle that continues to repeat unless you get your stress under control. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that you know, smoking being a, a real risk factor, that it might even increase the, the Absolutely. amount you smoke. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
most people who are smokers or habitual smokers, they will smoke more when they're stressed. Um, and studies have shown, many studies have shown that smoking has led to an increased risk of coronary artery disease. So the idea would be to manage the stress level so that you can reduce the tobacco consumption and um, hopefully decrease your risk. Well, Rachel, let's talk about some of those ways we can manage stress and anxiety. Uh, have tips to offer to, again, particularly for women who are just Gosh, they have such busy lifestyles trying to very often manage careers outside the home and children and husbands and everything else. What, what can they do to, to manage some of those anxieties? I think it's interesting that in America we tend to like value stress. We look at these women who do everything. They have all of the things that you just mentioned and we're like, oh my goodness, I don't know how she does that. That's amazing. And that's a problem because those women are oftentimes the ones who are suffering and they're not the ones getting treatment oftentimes. And those are that's one of the statistics for women death related to heart disease is, I mean, they're so high now. Um, I think a lot of it is things that we know, things that we just might not be doing, um, taking care of ourselves, the proper amount of sleep, diet, just like Dr. Cloroni men mentioned, um, not drinking as much, not smoking, but calming down our thoughts. We can do those with meditation. We can do that with exercise. We can do that with talk therapy if we want to, but also, um, you know, we can do gratitude lists. We can do any type of mindfulness training. Oh, there's so many options to help us with our stress reduction. So it really is as much about taking care of your maybe spiritual and emotional health as it is your physical health. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. If you're not, um, if you're not emotionally healthy, you're not going to have motivation to be physically healthy. So they really do go hand in hand. It's interesting, I guess, and I'll, maybe I'll ask both of you about this that. Um, you know, women very often they stay after the men in their lives, after their husbands. I, I know in my own, case, in my own case, my wife is she makes sure I go for my checkups and and uh, and Rachel, they they don't always take care of themselves, do they? No. Now, the, one of the things that we do know is that there is some research. We're not quite sure why, but we have been able to see that having a lot of social support, whether it's our girlfriends, our moms, our sisters, our church group, those people do have decreased levels of stress and a little bit more resilience when dealing with these crises that come up in our lives. So social support and trying to have our own cohort of people who kind of stay after us, mm -hmm. that's a really important thing for stress reduction and just survival in this world. Yeah, but we are oftentimes the caretakers of other people, but we sure. don't tend to take care of ourselves. Yeah. And you need to. And, and I, I would think, Dr. Cloroni, another thing that is new to kind of this, this current age we're living in is we are constantly plugged in to everything, whether it's on the phone or a tablet or TV or whatever. I, I, there's, there has to be benefits to unplugging. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if you look on, you know, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Pinterest, whatever social media platform you follow, um, there's always pressure to be the perfect wife, the perfect mom, the perfect daughter. You know, you have to make all the baked goods for school. You have to make sure, you know, you're on time everywhere. You have to make sure everybody gets to their ballet lessons or their music lessons or their soccer game. Um, I think it would honestly help for people to unplug at times to just take a step back from all of that. Just take a break. Enjoy being with your family. Enjoy, you know, a nice vacation away where you're not plugged into social media. You're not worried about what am I missing? What, um, what am I trying to keep up with? Anything like that. It's nice just to relax, be with your family, enjoy your time with them and that end result will help to lower your blood pressure, help to reduce some of those risk factors. And don't ignore the symptoms, don't ignore your body, right? Absolutely, absolutely. If you have any of those symptoms of increased stress or any symptoms of coronary artery disease, it's not something to ignore. It's something to talk with your primary care physician about. Yeah. And Rachel, we're, we talk, we've talked a lot about females, but it's equally as important for the guys out there too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh my goodness. We actually make our clients oftentimes put their cell phones away for a period of time, and if they struggle with it, we give them a follow-up assignment to do that in the evening. And for our women, it, the same thing, like doing something for yourself. You know, we, we imagine as women, when we're in the bathroom, finally taking a bath, and we see the hands underneath the door, um, doing something for ourselves <laughs> in those moments and really being intentional about it, getting your family on board, making your, your kids excited about having mom time at the same, it's really difficult to do that. But if we we can get everyone on board and making time for ourselves. That's really important. And our fathers, our dads, the men in our lives need it too. Yeah, Good absolutely. advice for everyone. Um, and Dr. Cloroni, again, we encourage come in for those annual 
uh, checkups that's incredibly important. Absolutely. That is the time where, you know, we dedicate, most physicians will dedicate extra time during that appointment to not only discuss preventative measures, but usually at that um, time is where we screen for depression and anxiety. Um, that's, our, that's our appointment dedicated to sit down and talk to you about the things that are affecting your life, the things that may be affecting your health status, any psychosocial barriers that we may have that may affect your care. That's the optimal time to bring up any concerns with your um, physician. Okay. Well, before we go, I'd like to ask both of you, Rachel, maybe you first, if you could offer one tip for emotional well-being, what would that be? I would really focus on the gratitude list. And every time, I mean, life is going to be so overwhelming from time to time, and there are things that are going to be outside of our control. But focusing on the things that we do have control over and the things that are positive in our life, maybe that will help counteract some of the stressful things. Dr. I'd say, um, honestly, diet and exercise, really. I mean, studies have shown that increased exercise um, leads to better mental health, um, well-being, and diet changes really can make a world of difference. If you, you know, if you're eating fast food all the time and you don't exercise, you're going to, you know, not feel well. You're not going to have the energy. If you're eating well, if you're taking care of your body, um, your chance of stress and your stress level will be significantly decreased. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you. Uh, thank you both for joining us. It was great information. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us also. And don't forget, Floyd.org is a great location to go to for all kinds of resources. If you don't have a primary care physician and you would like to see Dr. Cloroni, uh, we, we certainly are, are thankful that she's with us today. If you'd like to see her or one of our other great primary care physicians, you can find all of them at Floyd.org and find one that uh, is in your area and meets your needs. And, then also heart.floyd.org is a great location for all of our heart-related information, including some of the things we've talked about today, your emotional well-being. As a matter of fact, right there on the homepage of heart.floyd.org, you'll see a graphic with the emojis, all the different, uh, uh, I guess, the, uh, the range of emotions that are kind of negative. Just click on that, and you can find some great tips about how to release stress and anxiety in your own life. So again, that's heart.floyd.org. And, uh, and don't forget to check out our behavioral health program. Great things going on there. And again, you can find information about that at Floyd org as well and uh, recommend also you watch the other two videos again the first one talked about risk factor signs and symptoms we were joined by dr uh, jacqueline cheatham terry and robin cater who's a clinical educator at floyd great information about signs and symptoms and risk factors there and then number two was uh, our procedures for if when you come into floyd's uh, emergency care center exhibiting signs of heart heart issues, heart attack, chest pain, that kind of thing. Uh, watch that one as well. Great information there. Thanks a lot for joining us. And until next time, I'm Dan Bevels with Floyd Medical Center. Have a good day.